Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial with Oscar Lars Painting Studio. With the new vampire release for the Soul Blight Grave Lords, we wanted to make sure that you had a tutorial on how to paint blood red armor. We hope you're gonna enjoy this tutorial. Let's begin. In step one, we coat the armor plates in a mix of 50-50 wog flesh and corn red. This will help to desaturate and darken the corn red and give it a bit of complementary contrast to the red armor. So for anybody new to this channel, it helps you to set up your model for three different types of approaches to create contrast. I coat the armor in a thin layer not to lose any detail. In the next step, we add another thin coat to the armor to help the color with the coverage over the black primer. This will help to set you up for the next layers of uh, color so that they are all successful and luminous. So while this layer dries, I want to go over my strategy as I've received a lot of questions on miniatures to critique where this has been relevant. The idea with the next step is to use a zenithal light point. What this means is that the light hits from above, deriving from the term sun in zenith, uh, meaning that the sun is at the highest point in the sky. But for model painting we need to adjust this a bit more or there would be too much shadow around the model. So instead of one light source, I want you to picture that there are four different light sources at the front, back and both sides of the model at about a 45 degree angle from the top. It essentially creates an umbrella light for all angles. This way you'll have light shining at an angle from every view of the model as you turn it or walk around the gaming table. This is a simple way of creating light source strategy for a miniature painting and is quite common among many painters who paint for gaming rather than for example display and bust. In addition to this, we also want to consider reflective light. This is a softer light that will bounce from the ground or any object on the ground back up on the model, meaning that we shouldn't just leave the panels that are not in view of the zenithal light, just uh, like wog flesh and corn red in this example. We just want to make sure that we add some corn red to the undersides to help us with that glow. Okay, so moving on. In the next step, we apply pure and corn red, considering all these previous points of reference for the light. So as you can see, I apply the red on the knee pad facing down, but saving some dark areas just before it reaches the top edge. Below that would be considered that reflective light illuminating the knee pad as the light source from above would necessarily not reach that point. In step 4, I mix the corn red with a little bit of Vallejo Ice Yellow, which creates a pale light red color. I apply this in the same manner on a lot of panels, but I don't want to do too much of it, because I still want the corn red to be the main color of the armor. I edge highlight all the armor with this color. In addition here, I add some scratches to the armor to add some interest. This prevents the paint job from being too flat and helps to give the armor some history. With this type of paint job, you can go as crazy as you'd like and weather down with some metallics or darker colors, add mud stains and such. There's really no limits to as far as you want to go with this. In this case, I'm keeping it very simple and just adding one color scratch. In step 5, I add a bit more ice yellow to the mix and add a tiny bit of Evil Sun Scarlet to help keep the saturation of the red, as the more ice yellow we mix in, the more saturation of the red we lose. I start edge highlighting all of the armor here too, adding just a few more scratches. I then simply add a bit more ice yellow and evil sun scarlet yet again and do another edge highlight focusing on corners and nubbins and such. This will make the armor look very sharp and angular which is exactly what I want for this armor. I keep this mainly on the edges where the full light would hit, so thinking about that zenithal concept that we talked about earlier, not using it on the reflective light points.
Another thing to keep in mind here as we finish up this tutorial is that you can go as dramatic on these highlights as you want. On Gorath the Enforcer, you can see I'm a bit more careful and subdued on the edge highlights to keep the armor a bit more soft. And the prints on the tutorial here, I am going a lot more forceful with the highlights, making them bolder and more exaggerated. And this will help to keep the model, you know, looking better at arm's length on the tabletop as you play with the model. This is simply a matter of taste and neither one of them is right or wrong. Just like in the skin tutorial, you can go in and refine and render these armor plates more and less depending on how you like to paint. And either it could be a quick paint job or a more complex one. And that's it. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial on painting vampire blood red armor. Now remember, you can use this tutorial to paint other colors of armor of the same type. For example, if you wanted to do a black armor, you could easily use, you know, Chaos Black, Dark Reaper, rust gray and administratum gray to do the same type of armor but in a different color this video was made possible by our amazing patrons who kindly donate to keep this public project going if you want to become a patron don't hesitate to head over there and pledge a subscription we post some longer videos from time to time for more in-depth videos when we have extra material to spare you can also contribute by shopping some at Oscar Lars Painting Studio merchandise, which you can find on our website and a link down in the description. Intro video was created by Robbie Shillstone. Editing was done by the amazing Martin Kramer. Sculpt we used was Gorath the Enforcer from Games Workshop Warhammer Underworlds. Please don't forget to smash those like and subscribe buttons. Thank you so much for watching and happy painting.